All right, everybody. How you doing? It's Brian from Witch Doctor. Thanks for tuning in. We're, we're, we're looking at the Garmin Zero C1 Pro, new chronograph that came out recently, and comparing it to the Lab Radar. Um, I already put out some data from a previous video uh, showing uh, differences between the two, and I went ahead and just collected more data. Um, I was doing a uh, shooting test where I was testing whether having an ejector on the bolt face, um, having the ejector on or off made any difference uh, in precision or ballistics, and uh, by the way, it didn't. But um, anyway, went ahead and continued to collect data on both with both of these chronographs uh, with that ejector test, and essentially was shooting my uh, 30 BR cartridge. And what I, what I found was uh, essentially what I, um, I found the same thing that I found with the 6PPC, that the lab radar and Garmin, in terms of the overall velocity, uh, were identical, um, very, very similar. Um, lot, very little shot-to-shot -shot variation between the two. Um, and again, uh, overall five-shot um, velocity averages were about the same. Um, I found the same thing as the last test with the standard deviation. The uh, lab radar uses a different equation. It uses uh, basically the wrong equation. Um, should not be using a, a inferential statistic equation for this type of uh, application. Uh, it's just a gross misapplication of the, the certain type of standard deviation it's using to calculate the standard deviation you'll get on your output with the lab radar. Uh, with the Garmin, it uses the correct um, equation that, that you want to use. So there were differences in the lab radar SDs and the Garmin SDs. Um, and extreme spreads were a little bit different, not much. Um, the reason why is just because you'll have a little bit of uh, variability um, between the lab radar and the Garmin. Um, but overall, statistically speaking, when you actually analyze the data, uh, total, you know, velocity, was there any statistically significant difference? No. The lab radar, among all the shots, um, averages of the group shot with um, the 6PPC and the 30BR, with the 6PPC being shot in the last test and the 30BR in this one, with all those combined and averaged, um, the average was 3160.77 for the lab radar, for the Garmin is 3162.98. So no statistical difference. Um, both of these are given, you know, just about the same uh, velocities. Okay, and standard deviations, again, like I noticed, if you see the lab radar is a little bit higher. Um, it's it, it's an inflated standard deviation. Again, the equation is not appropriate for this application. Um, with the Garmin, it's a little bit lower, but statistically speaking, with um, 22 data points each, uh, it's not significantly different, but I guarantee if you shoot this test maybe 10 to 20 more times, it probably would get statistically significant. But anyway, again, it, that's easily explained by the equation being used to calculate SD, which I mentioned in the last test. Okay, um, extreme spread, again, for lab radar, 22.6, and for the Garmin, 22.4. So not, not different at all, just uh, statistically equivalent, essentially. So. So yeah, um, in terms of velocity readings, I'm getting the same from the lab radar uh, and the Garmin. Okay, what I'm gonna show you is two short videos here. Um, the first video, we set up the lab radar um, to use the internal microphone to detect the shots. We set it on a low setting uh, the reason why we set it on a low setting was we wanted to see if having that lab radar and the Garmin set two benches away from a shooter, um, what would happen? Um, so if I'm shooting two benches away, I have my lab radar set up, my Garmin set up, can I expect uh, any one of them or both 
to start picking up that shooter shot two benches away. Um, what ended up actually happening, and you'll, again, you'll see this in the video, is the lab radar would get triggered, um, but it would give an error message that said it couldn't track the projectile. So no actual data was given, and what you had to do to reset it is press that little check button right here uh, to get it back to uh, being armed and ready for the next shot. So um, essentially, and the, the Garmin did nothing. It just <laughs> sat there. So the Garmin stayed engaged. It was waiting, you know, for the shot. Um, the lab radar gave an error message. So that tells me right there that, you know, the Garmin is a lot less sensitive to shooters, at least in this test, two benches down. Okay. Um, and then we thought, well, all right, that's two benches down. Um, sometimes the range gets really full <laughs> and you're... You know, you have someone shooting in the bench right next to you. So we essentially placed the lab radar and the Garmin one bench away. And what ended up happening was, um, and again, we were shooting the same rifle, by the way, just, just FYI. It was uh, me and a benchrest, uh, fellow benchrest shooting buddy of mine. Um, he was shooting really good groups. That rifle was really in tune. It was a six PPC rifle. Um, and so uh, we used that exact same rifle, exact same ammo to look at, you know, um, look at the Garmin and the lab radar. Um, and so for the second uh, video, you will see, again, it's the same, same rifle, same shooter at the rifle. Um, one bench away, the lab radar did trigger and it gave velocity readings, which were about 50 feet per second lower than the actual velocity. So um, having it one bench away, having a shooter on the next bench uh, is going to pick up their shots. And if the person on the bench next to you says, hey, what's my velocity? It's going to be 50 feet per second lower if you tell them. So um, just FYI. Uh, and then the, the Garmin did nothing. Again, it, it's just, it just sat there. It stayed engaged, waiting. It did not give a, a you know, detect a shot and give you a false reading. Uh, it just stayed, stayed put. Um, so basically, we concluded with the testing that having that lab radar one or two benches away, even on the lowest sensitivity setting, um, is going to trigger it somehow, um, either give you an error message that you have to cycle through, or give you a false reading on a velocity from a shooter, you know, on the next bench. Whereas the Garmin didn't. The Garmin just uh, stayed engaged, waited, um, and would only give you readings if it was placed uh, within the, you know, area specified in the Garmin's uh, manual uh, in terms of where it should be placed to pick up a shot. So anyway, so interesting information to know when you're considering, you know, the Garmin and the lab radar. Um, all right, so let's go to those videos. And thanks everyone again for tuning in. And um, please come join my Patreon. It's a, a great environment, a learning environment, and uh, there lots of interactions with patrons, um, all with the intent of uh, advancing information and knowledge. And again, it's free of the sort of keyboard warrior stuff that you're going to see on many of the other forums um, where there's a lot of just empty posts and uh, odd information and uh, just <laughs> uh, confusion, general confusion is kind of just the way I describe it. But anyway, um, so yeah, I ho hope you come and join the Patreon page. It'd be nice to, nice to have you there. Smoking. Moving. <laughs> yeah, it's good consistency. It's not bad.